Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. And welcome, my friends, to PSA Hell. I feel like there should be more documentation on promotional giveaways like this than there really is, but... Here we are with another one of these that I have nothing on the history of it. Riot at Robot World was produced in association with NACME, the National Action Council for Minorities in Engineering Incorporated. I have no idea why the Incorporated is there, since checking out their website, it's not really presented as an incorporated business. Maybe in 1991 it was more about how scholarships for kids could really turn a profit? Anyway, yeah, NACME is mostly about helping underrepresented people find successful STEM careers and provide scholarships in those fields. And in 1991, they apparently decided to promote this with a short comic where Spider-Man fights robots. The book was largely distributed at National Engineers Week in February of 1992. Oh, and apparently people decided that this had to be reviewed because they keep sending copies of it to me! I don't know, maybe it was just a really ubiquitous giveaway, but I actually ended up selling a bunch of copies of this to half price books just because there were so many of them that I had been given by people. It's why I realized I needed to review this thing, or else I would someday be the proud owner of every single copy. So let's dig into the amazing Spider-Man Riot at Robot World and see if it's worth all the copies that were sent my way. The cover is really damn good. We've got Spider-Man fighting a giant robotic dinosaur. You could call it a Mecha Godzilla. I could actually call it that, especially since Godzilla is technically canon to the Marvel Universe. But yeah, the Robo T-Rex is menacing people along with some other robots on the ground. Mind you, the scale's a bit wonky for the buildings in the background. How far away is that Robot World sign and entrance from the kids in front of it? Or is it actually just a tiny building? A Robot World for ants, perhaps? For National Engineers Week, under a grant from IBM Corporation. That's gonna take some serious software. The inside of the cover, of course, has a recap page for the five people who don't know Spider-Man's origin story. The almost legendary career of the amazing Spider-Man began just a few years ago in an ordinary exhibition hall. And with the sliding time scale of comics, just a few years ago is always accurate. There, during a demonstration of the effects of radioactivity, a spider was accidentally bombarded by untold amounts of radiation. You know, where's the Spider-Verse alternate reality where the radioactive spider itself became a superhero instead of Peter? And in the split second before life faded from its body, the tiny creature bit the nearest living thing. High school student Peter Parker. Oh god, I'm dying! I'd better eat somebody! And thus, of course, Spidey got superpowers. He found that he now possessed the proportionate strength of a spider. That with the greatest of ease, he could lift 40 times his own weight. Which he proceeded to use for home renovation, in particular staircases. A brilliant science student, but only an average fighter student. Peter developed a set of wrist-worn web shooters, which enable him to simulate the web-spinning abilities of the spider. The early prototypes where these were shot from near his butt were quickly discarded. 
Anyway, let's move on to the actual story. We open with Spidey having just webbed up a purse snatcher. Thanks for returning my purse, Spider-Man. My whole paycheck is in here. And Mr. T hasn't been around to help protect people's paychecks from getting stolen since he went to work for a boxer. Not to worry, ma'am. Your friendly neighborhood mugger up there apologizes and promises he'll never snatch another purse again. Isn't that right? <laughs> Sounds sincere to me. I'm pretty sure I heard him scream the F-bomb a few times in there. He's just that devoted to changing his ways. You've really got to admire his passion. Spidey heads off, needing to get to Robot World to do a photography job. Robot World itself is apparently Disney's replacement for Epcot. They even reused Spaceship Earth here. At least I didn't have any trouble finding the place. Either this is Robot World, or somebody hired Buckminster Fuller to build a new Yankee Stadium. Eh, close. It's actually for Rollerball. He swings down to the parking lot. Now, if Spider-Man can find a secluded spot in the parking lot to change into his street clothes, Peter Parker can make his appointment to get photos of the park's grand opening. I'd like to think that this was actually five minutes between those two statements, and he just held on to that thought until he was in his regular clothes again. Peter meets with Anna Lopez, the project head of Robot World. Robot World is more than just a theme park. It's a multi-million dollar complex that we hope will be a research and development center for future robotics. Let me show you the amazing things we're doing with advancements in Furby technology. They use the theme park to improve robot designs. That to educate the public about the important role robotics plays in everyday life. It's true, you know, my life is certainly made better with the presence of robots. Taking the side mats on a road trip and borrowing your car for it. You can't even steer it, you don't have arms! Well, whose fault is that? Taking your wallet too! Hey! This is supposed to be promoting diversity in engineering and the like, so some kids will be joining them on the tour. Carlos, Les, and Maria. They've each won a national essay contest on the uses of robots in everyday life. I'm building an artificial intelligence system. I'm calling it Skynet. They head over to the exhibit halls. I don't want to seem like a dope or anything, Anna, but let's start with the basics. What exactly is a robot? I don't want to seem like a dope, so let me ask a very stupid question. I know, the comic is for kids who may just be learning about it for the first time, but I've got to imagine there was a better way to set up the question. Anna lets Maria fill it in, since she apparently answered the question pretty thoroughly in her own essay. In the broadest sense, a robot is any device that performs a physical task that used to be done by people. Damn flashlights replacing all the humans who used to make burning torches! I actually did hear the same definition as a kid during a presentation at school, that a lot of objects we wouldn't think of as robots are technically robots. I'm not gonna split hairs about this. There are lots of things one could argue is or is not a robot. Except for Mr. Computer. That is not a robot. That is a monster from hell. Still, it's not really the popular definition. Instead, exemplified by stuff like Mars rovers or humanoid robots like they see in the next exhibit. Hey, I saw this movie. Not sure why the Gaston villain prequel movie had robots in it, but it did make it better. That's the only place you'll ever see a robot like him. True, real robots are a lot more like this one. That is the most complicated looking Roomba I've ever seen. But yeah, single purpose robots that are designed more for repetitive, precise procedures are the big norm of robotics. Manufacturing and assembly line process stuff. Mobile robots like this one are used in hospitals to free medical personnel from labor intensive duties like food service, allowing nurses to spend more time caring for patients. Then they break down and the for-profit health insurance industry forces the patient to pay for it if it happens in their room. Since the rest of the park is opening up, they decide to go check out some more. The dinosaur exhibit is spectacular! Showing off the time when robot dinosaurs ruled the Earth. All of a sudden, the movie prop robot flashes to life. I understand. All flesh must die! This is a weird remake of Westworld. Assembly robots now reconfigured to produce weapons to destroy humans. Oh no! The hospital robot is gonna use those food trays as weapons! In the Dino Land section, a T-Rex, of course, roars and leaves its enclosure to kill all humans. Build the next Jurassic World theme park with robot dinosaurs, they said. It'll be safer than the clones, they said. I wanted to go to Six Flags, but no! I could have been riding Green Lantern First Flight right now! That thing's always reliable! 
It seems our heroes hadn't reached the dinosaur area yet, and are instead being menaced by this thing. Impossible! These machines are doing things that they aren't designed to do! That they can't do! That one's writing poetry about Vietnam, and that one's making a new Mountain Dew flavor! Oh my god, they actually have this robot here going, Crush, kill, destroy. Crush, kill, destroy. That's either a reference or an incredible coincidence. Anyway, Anna tries to disable the robot. All robots have an emergency stop button, I just have to- The stop button! It's been removed! Oh, sorry about that, it's easier to put the decals on when it's removed. It grabs Anna, but Peter's able to force it off and get her free while it goes off to do... Whatever. It's still saying crush, kill, destroy, yet it apparently failed to do any of those. Great, you build robots to replace humans and they still can't do the job right. Peter runs off on the pretense of getting more film for his camera. Get more film? That's gotta be the lamest excuse for slipping away I've ever come up with. Ah, between that and me not knowing what robots are, I'm really having an off day. What, did that purse snatcher escape and rob that lady again? Spidey takes on the robot dinosaur, Although it's surprisingly easy to take out. He just webs up its mouth and then rips its head off! God, no wonder we couldn't have the Transformers be part of the Marvel Universe. Spidey would have just ripped Grimlock's head off to end his brief time as leader. And then he attacks C-3PO and R2-D2. I'm barely kidding here. They're obvious parodies of them, which is... Kind of hilarious because then you have to imagine 3PO going on a killing spree. He would too! If we get another few movies, I fully expect him to finally snap. And hey, what the hell were the two doing that made you need to kick him, Spidey? And where do you think you're going? Haven't you heard of the three laws of robotics? Well, considering they come from a galaxy far, far away, probably not, dude. Back with Anna and the kids, Anna's gotten an idea based on a remark Les had made earlier about a remote-controlled tank. Send out a signal from the main control room that'll put them all in maintenance mode. Like using the remote to shut off the TV! Of course! A remote control device is exactly like a remote control device! However, when they enter, they discover who it was who did all this. Ultron. You dare presume to order me?! Ha! Pitiful fleshy vessel! Do you not know? I am Ultron, the next ruler of this planet! Why do you sound like Starscream? Because that's just how Linkara always thought I would sound like before he saw me elsewhere! Just seems like you should sound like James Spader because that was the version that was in the MCU. Well, with the benefit of hindsight. Anna, not afraid of Ultron at all, just asks what's to stop her from shutting him down, too. Very little! Aside from these animatronics from your Robots in the Movies display! Unfortunately, this turns out to just be Huey and Dewey from Silent Running. Also, why can't you just kill them yourself, dude? Why do you need Discount Terminator and Robocop for this? Also, why is Robocop here? Dude's a cyborg, not a robot. Hasta la vista baby. So if Ultron has full control over them, does that mean he made the Terminator say that? Spidey swings in for the rescue. And hey, this is actually one of those times where this clip is appropriate. Robots. I hate robots. Spidey friggin' punches the Terminator's head off! Yeah, why the hell are John Connor and the Human Resistance having such a problem with the machines? Apparently they're built like crash test dummies. In the sequel, you play the good guy. And in the sequels after that... It's increasingly disappointing. Spidey's really into decapitation today. Anyway, while he quips and distracts the robots, Anna works to shut them down. She figures that if Ultron is controlling them, then he has some way of communicating with them, and that connection might work both ways. Could we turn this control box into a portable unit? Great idea, Les! Okay, one, that's a wall-mounted box with shielded piping and cables and wires running into it. No, you cannot. Two, why is that a great idea? You guys are still in the same room as all this happening. Making it portable changes nothing. Ultron, finally sick of Spider-Man talking, blasts him and grabs him by the throat. Anna interrupts, carrying the box, which still has wires sticking out of it. Good job on that whole portability thing. Ultron tosses Spidey aside and Anna uses the control box, sending out a signal that disables the robots and consequently Ultron as well. Later, the kids are congratulating Anna on defeating Ultron and how they think being an engineer is so cool now. This wasn't exactly a typical day on the job. Normally, we only have to deal with the Mole Man. 
But problem solving, like what we did today, is an important part of any kind of engineering. As is the part where you hit your head repeatedly against the wall when it turns out the solution to a problem is tiny and insignificant and you should have noticed it hours ago. Les thinks that he'd love to be an engineer, but his family can't afford college. Anna, however, says that if they're academically prepared, there's scholarships out there that can help. And then enjoy paying off student loans for the rest of your life. And beyond! She says they have to start now by taking math and science classes in high school, which... Yeah, that's true, but these kids all wrote award-winning essays about robotics, so I've got to imagine they're already signed up for some. And so our comic ends with Spidey swinging off, and him thinking that after taking on Ultron, doing some studying will seem easy by comparison. At least as easy as ripping off a robot dinosaur's head. The back also has a mini-comic about how to become an engineer, but there's not really anything to speak of other than some recommended classes. Though amusingly, they apparently thought, Oh crap, we don't want the other departments to feel bad! Uh, take English to communicate effectively! Also social studies to understand the world! Not that they're wrong, just that it feels kinda tacked on. Otherwise, this comic is... actually pretty decent. I have some minor quibbles, of course. Peter's really not given his A-game today, both for quips and talking in general. Les is the only one of the kids who seems to have a personality, and not really much of one, unfortunately. Ultron is also taken down a little too easily, but hey, it's a promotional comic about engineering careers and robots. It's not exactly trying to be the cleverest writing out there. Still, the real highlight here are the fight scenes. They cram in a lot of action for a PSA comic, and they're not half-assing it when they're including Spidey against a robot dinosaur, the Terminator, Robocop, and various other robots. As a PSA, it's not even very distracting about its message, basically going, hey, robots are cool even when they're trying to murder us, so here's some basic stuff that'll help you get started if you want a career studying this stuff. Honestly, it probably underplays that element to the point where if it wasn't shorter than normal and with the inclusion of underdeveloped characters, you might think this was just a normal issue and not intended to promote diversity in engineering. But overall, it ain't bad. Which is not something I can say for next time. It's another Patreon-sponsored review. And it's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The Ultimate Edition. I missed the robot dinosaur already. Oh, and next week, Storyline Resumes. Hello, my friends. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on new video releases. If you'd like to support future videos, you can check out my Patreon or purchase a t-shirt via Teespring or Shark Robot. Thanks for watching.